So what we're going to do is go through the sum of the supplies that you have in your kit. And as we're going through it, we're going to do experimentation with these supplies. So you are basically going to be able to tell which supplies work well with each other, which supplies don't work with each other, what can you layer on top of what, what can't you layer, okay? So as I call out these supplies, I'm going to show you a picture of it, and then you're going to start by finding that in your kit, okay? So we're going to start with just our number two pencil. And even though this looks like just a normal pencil, this is a Statler and it is a really good, strong pencil. So get that out of your kit. And we're, when we draw today, I don't want you guys to think about making representational images. Like don't try to draw an eye or a bunny or something like that. You just want to kind of draw to make marks. So we're, this is going to be abstract and mark making. So you can make thick marks, you can make thin marks, however you want. And when I say marks, I literally mean like scribbling to see what this tool can do. When I scribble and doodle, I tend to make a lot of patterns. Don't feel like you have to do this but don't try to think about what you're drawing. I don't want you to be consumed with imagery that's representational. Just kind of make some marks on your page and adjust the pressure that you're using as well. So if you've got an area you want to see how dark, how much you have to press to get it to be as dark as you can get it, how fine of a point you can get it, the pressure that you have to use, how much does it smear. You can flip your paper around. Just try to stay away from representational images. And don't draw tiny, draw big, because you're going to do experiments on what you can put on top of something else so don't just make like a little scribble in the corner make a mess and stop me and ask questions don't feel like you have to be silent through this so if you've got something to say if you're like i hate this pencil mar, 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 that's fine i want to hear that because this is all about playing with these supplies to figure out what they can do and what they can't do. So the reason I put this pencil in here is because it's actually a, quite a strong piece of lead that's in this pencil. And as you guys know, when you drop a pencil, it shatters the lead all the way on the inside of the shaft. So even if you drop it softly, it will still shatter depending on how fragile it is. So as you are taking care of these supplies, you really want to think about like not dropping them consciously because it just makes it difficult to use. Every time you go to use it, you'll have to sharpen it and it'll break and use it and sharpen it'll break. So I wanted you guys to all have just a basic pencil more because it has an eraser on the other side. So this is just like an issue of convenience of like, okay, I can turn it around quickly and make a mark. So see how you can erase if it erases completely, if it leaves a ghost of an image, just kind of play around with the pressure. And that goes for all of the tools. Like I can see I, I'm using my finger and it's leaving like a trail which lets me know that this is kind of a soft lead in this graphite and so it will smear quite a bit and that can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on the use i can get a nice clean edge with that eraser it's a pretty decent eraser for being just a number two pencil so don't feel like you guys are 
drawing the same thing as me. We're just making marks here. You can go back on top. Okay, now we're gonna grab the sketch and wash pencil. So this is a pencil that has a silver end. You can see up here. And this is going to feel really similar to the pencil you just used. A little bit more resistance, maybe. I want you to try to layer them on top of each other, just a little bit. Sketch and wash pencil, some of you have used, some of you haven't. And what makes this pencil kind of special is that you can add water and create washes. Isn't that exciting? Yes, Miss Curry, it's the most exciting pencil I've ever seen. I can't believe how exciting that pencil is. Right, Ian? So exciting. Thank so you. So exciting. Try cross-hatching. See how much you have to use to get some depth to it. Try using the side of it. And then I want you guys to find your brush that looks like this in your kit. Who knows what type of brush this is, just looking at it. What type of brush is this? Watercolor. Yeah. How do you know? What was the first clue that it was watercolor? Um, like the, the bristles on it. Exactly. Kind of like so the bristles are black and you can see that they're super soft and they have no resistance at all, which is good because when you're moving water around, you don't want any resistance. Okay. So I'm going to take my brush, and you guys all do this too. Isabella and Jaina, go get a cup of water and a paper towel and all your art supplies because we're practicing and experimenting today. So now I'm going to take that brush, and I loaded it up with water, and I'm going to see what happens when I activate that sketch and wash. And you can see that I'm turning it into a wet medium and it's moving all that stuff around. And where it's overlapping my graphite pencil, I kind of want to see what that does. So I'm experimenting to see how to create value and shapes opposed to lines, what that's gonna do. And it's gonna look different when it dries as well, so it's gonna continue to change. And depending on how much water you use, if you don't use very much water, then you have a little bit more control. You can also go back into the area that's wet and draw right on top of it. You don't have to wait for it to dry. Now, obviously this is gonna dry at different speeds depending on how much water you're using. You 
even if you see images start to appear, just fight the urge to make something into a bunny. Apparently that's the most common thing people see when they're drawing abstractly, it's bunnies. I don't know why. I see a dead bird. Do you? That says a lot about you, Ian. I love that in you. So the softer the lead, the darker the medium. And you'll be able to tell this when we switch to the next two. So the next pencil I want you guys to grab is the woodless pencil. And they call it woodless because there's no wood. Dun dun. So the difference between this and your yellow pencil is that this does not have the wood casing around it and it allows you to make marks by just holding it to the side so you can get a much bigger area but it also is able to come to like a razor point when you sharpen it and if you guys need your sharpener go ahead and get your sharpener out because this wears down pretty quickly because it's a pretty soft lead in here and see what this does if you layer. Don't feel like you have to be confined to an area. You can open this up and make bigger marks. Nice fat shapes. See what happens when it intersects with some of the other tools that you've already used. Do you guys make patterns when you doodle? I don't. Show me your drawings. Let's see what they look like. They better not be any bunnies. Perfect, Angelica. Ian, I'm gonna be so mad at you with bunnies. That's great, Jasmine. <clears throat> Are you overlapping your stuff, Jasmine? Ian, use a new page. I was, that was in, don't look at the color stuff. I was doing something else. Use a new page. Use a new page. I want you to fill this with only these mediums because you're going to reference these later. That's perfect, Stringer. Nice, big, fat images. Don't be scared. Use that whole page. Everybody finish with this little pencil your skinny woodless pencil. All right, now let's move on to this big fat dude. So if you look at the top, you will have a number before the letter B. What numbers do you guys all have? Because you all have different numbers. I have a two in front of my B. Wow, nine. you got a nine, Jaina? You got the mother load. What do you guys have? What else do you have? The uh -huh. higher the number, the softer it is. So you got a 2B. Yep. So the 9B is going to be the softest, blackest. So those of you that have the 9B, you got the luck of the draw there. So what's great about these is depending on how dirty you want to get, if you peel that paper off of there, you can have a huge swipe of graphite and you can cover big areas if you peel the paper off. Those of you who don't want to get that dirty, you can peel the paper off and then you can go back with a tissue when you're holding it, if you're trying to manipulate it and you don't want to get the graphite all over. And you'll start to notice that like the side of your hand is going to get filthy the more graphite you use. Use your finger to see how easily it smears. The 9B will smear if you just look at it. 
That's just the way it is. This is the only one of your pencils that's not going to fit in that sharpener. And even though that looks like a stupid cheap sharpener, it's actually a fantastic sharpener. And it can sharpen not only color pencils, but it'll sharpen your charcoal, it'll sharpen your graphite, your number two, your watercolor color pencils. So it's pretty special sharpener. There's a million sharpeners, you'll see. But I want you guys to make sure that you're layering these things because you want to know what they can and can't do. This is going to help you with the parameters when you go to experiment. And in the words of the late, great Bob Ross, there are no unhappy accidents. You're just playing to see what can happen and you'll surprise yourself. So I've got not only lines, but I've got shapes developing on this page. So I can kind of see what's going to happen. And again, depending on the pressure you use, it's going to change quite a bit. All right. Let's find our erasers. Okay, the first eraser I want you guys to find is the kneaded eraser. It is the square eraser and it's wrapped in clear plastic. And the reason they call it a kneaded eraser is because you need it. Knead it like dough and you need it to draw. Get it? Get it? You're so funny, Miss Curry. I know, I know, I am funny. Don't look at me like that, Terry. So as you knead it, this eraser will start becoming soft and warm and it is a self-cleaning eraser, as well as your latest addiction, because this is a therapy eraser. That what when does it look like? It is square, and this? it is, yep, that's it. I know, you would never think that that would become the magic that it is in my hands. So when you unwrap it, you can, pull it apart and it'll come apart into many pieces and that's great. And then just stick it back together and kind of wrap it around itself. And this is your new best friend because this little eraser will always be clean because it folds in on itself. And when it folds in on itself, it becomes a light gray and then it becomes clean, okay? So this is another non-resistant piece. It's very similar to the watercolor brush and then it really only works with certain mediums. So the watercolor brush is super flexible and it's non-resistant, it's kind of floppy, right? Same with this kneaded eraser. So if there's an area that you want to erase, it will erase a little bit, but you cannot get sharp edges when you erase with it. And it is used primarily with very soft mediums like vine charcoal. So you can try to lift it out. You guys used to do that when you were little with Silly Putty. Do you guys know what Silly Putty is? God, don't scare me. Okay. So if you take this and you see how clean it is in my hand, and I put it down here, I can lift it and pull some of that graphite off. But because it is soft and organic, it doesn't have those hard geometric shapes. So when you erase, you're not going to get a hard edge, you're going to get a soft edge, which can be good. So try to erase in some areas and see how much it takes in terms of the pressure to remove it. 
So your drawing is going to keep changing as you're playing. Oh, and look, I ripped my paper right here because it was still wet. So you can see, you can probably hear that ripping because that area was still wet. So when I pushed my eraser over, it just ripped that little chunk of the paper out, which is totally fine. It doesn't matter. It's going to get all the... The other benefit to this eraser is that it does not leave eraser shavings. So unlike the eraser on the end of this pencil, it will leave little eraser shavings. So you can actually use it to pick up the eraser shavings as you press into it. The next eraser I want you guys to find is the white eraser that says Factus on it. This is a vinyl eraser. And you will see that this also does not have hard edges. Now, those of you that are like me, I destroy my erasers. And if you peel off part of it, you can get a super sharp edge when you peel it off. So you don't feel like you have to do this if you don't want to do this to your eraser. But if I peel it like that, then I've got all these new sharp edges and I can go back and erase thin lines. But you can see it's leaving eraser shavings. And when I do this, I'm also smearing it a little bit. So just be aware that that happens. So I get fine lines with this. If you don't want to do that, some people are weird about destroying their erasers because they're precious. But look at, I still have this huge chunk of eraser. And then I've got this little guy. He's my little friend. And I can go in and erase tiny little areas with him. Now I can't erase the areas that are wet already. So these were activated by the water because I use the sketch and wash. Isabella, focus. So that I can't ever erase because it's permanent now because it's on my paper because of the water. The last eraser I want you to get looks like this. It's called a mono. And feel this eraser. This is a very different eraser. What do you think is in that eraser that makes it feel like that? Sand. Sand, right? You can see on the front, it says sand eraser mono on one of the sides. You can see it. So this is actually a great eraser to use with colored pencil because colored pencil builds up wax. And it's very difficult to break through that wax and to allow it to accept additional color pencil on top of it. So if you use this, it creates a texture and it has a tooth to it. So the paper will have a tooth again. Tooth means texture, right? So it has this little casing on it because the sand will wear on your hands eventually. It makes it easier to hold like this. This should erase anything that has not been activated with water and it has very sharp edges to it which is great so you can get nice sharp lines and you can see on mine it's kind of dragging where it almost looks like I had an outline here because it's dragging that graphite across so I can go back make marks You can make just as many marks with an eraser as you can with a pencil or whatever drawing tool. It doesn't even have to be a drawing tool. You can make marks with brushes. You can make marks with a stick. So I'm just experimenting to see how hard I have to press to pull up that graphite. 
you can even just tap your drawing down to remove some of those the residue That's not coming up because that was wet when I drew into that. So this area won't erase any longer. Do you guys understand what I mean about activating it with the water? As soon as you add water, it's permanent. All right, so these go in order of hard to soft. So it goes from soft, middle, hard, right? And that's the texture and what it will also remove. And don't forget about this friend, your chamois. This is French for chamois. This guy plays with what? What's in your kit that we use this for? What is that? Charcoal. The charcoal, right. So this is best used with the vine charcoal, which is what I want you guys to grab next. So your vine charcoal looks like this, and you have three sticks in there, and depending on how careful you were with your stuff, you might have six or ten sticks in there, because this is fragile, and it shatters pretty easily. So you should have a skinny, a medium, and a thick and you can pick whichever size you want to play with they all are pretty much the same and what is vine charcoal made of who remembers it's a stick literally that's been burned so these were just little twigs and sticks and they burned them and now they're drawing tools this is probably my favorite of all tools because it is the most flexible and you can do the most preliminary drawing and sketching before you make permanent marks and you make all your mistakes. Again, we don't have true mistakes. So I want you guys to use this and see how much of the graphite that we just played with you can cover using the charcoal because even though this is soft this will cover the graphite which is surprising right you can use your chamois to blend to erase It's also a subtractive tool as well as a blending tool. So this is that little chunk of paper that came out. So I'm going to use my finger and kind of smear that around in there. Your chamois can be used for mostly soft edges to blend. to do drawings and then erase your drawings. When we use pencil, we are less likely to erase than when we use the vine charcoal, which is why I always recommend it, especially if you're starting a painting. The only problem is unless you spray it, it disappears. It's pretty fragile in that sense. You can also go back and use your kneaded eraser with the vine charcoal to lift some areas out. And now I want you guys to go find this mother of all charcoals.
she is fabulous. And she is fabulous because she is rich and black and velvety. And this is compressed charcoal. So this is basically the same thing in that it's burnt, but it's been compre compressed and has a binder in it. So it makes it very hard in that it's dense. So that's all that charcoal that's all condensed. And when you use it, you will see immediately how all of that graphite turns gray. The contrast with this is so extreme that it will go on top of all of your graphite. So if you are layering something, this will go over your pencil. Nothing can fight the power of this charcoal. You can use your finger and smear it and get beautiful, rich, velvety shapes. And all of these values can be adjusted to be super subtle or extreme. Are you guys making a mess over there? Let's see. Yeah, filthy little fingers. That's what I like to see. It looks like a sailboat. Yours does or mine does? Mine. Let me see of. yours. Oh, it does. It's like completely snapped. All right. How do you guys like this charcoal? Does it scare you? Because it's so powerful. Or do you love the power? You can also get pretty fine lines with it considering it's such a big tool. Find an area and try to fill in an area that's solid with this because we're going to do a little experiment. So find, it doesn't have to be a huge shape, but just fill it in, use your finger. You can do some cross hatching if you want to fade it out to go from a solid black to a little bit of a lighter black. my little problem area there where I ripped the paper. Okay, now go find your charcoal pencil. He is like an orange color, kind of rusty. And it should say 6B, extra soft. Depending on if your point has broken off, you can sharpen him. And this is going to allow you to do more details. So just make some marks. See how close your lines have to stay together to create a solid shape. You can get a nice hard edge with this. Kind of takes on more of a geometric feel. And because it's extra soft, this will also smear and blend quite easily.
Now go grab your white charcoal pencil. Looks like this. It's kind of a light beige color. And I want you guys to see what you can go over using your white. So try going on top of your graphite. See if you can go on top of your graphite. See if you can go on top of your black charcoal, the vine charcoal. And you can see that mine is resisting. It stops. I'm trying to drag that line through. And this graphite is so slippery that it will not go on top of it, which is okay. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a constraint of the medium. But here, where I use the sketch and wash and I activated it, it will go on top of it. As soon as it hasn't been activated, it's slippery and it will not cover it. So you can do two things. If it's not covering and you want it to cover, you can go back with your sand eraser and try to get that tooth back from your paper to see if it will accept that white charcoal again, which it usually will. Are you guys lost in the land of doodle? Are you enjoying it or does this feel like torture? Because you should be enjoying this. This is not meant to be torturous. This is meant to be play. Hopefully your drawings all look very different than mine. Now when you try to go on top of the black charcoal using the white, mine turns kind of gray. It doesn't have that same pure white. So be aware if you're layering it, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. And again, you can go back with the sand eraser to get back to that original surface. Or you can use that as a way to create a gradation by layering it and not using a lot of pressure. You have a box of Conte, which is also French, like the chamois. It looks like this. Take that wrapper off, open that baby up. And you have four different colors slash values. Oh my God, Jasmine, you're killing me with those nails. Opening that with your nail. <laughs> They're good for something. So Conte is kind of like the love child of charcoal and pastel, where it has a waxiness to it, but it still allows for blending, okay? So these are in a little foam casing intentionally because they're kind of fragile so they don't smash up against one another. So you can just kind of lift it out with your fingernail, even if they're not as long as Jasmine's, you can pop that out of there. If you just press down on one side, you can pop it up on the other end. But I would definitely keep that little foam guy together 
because when you take that foam out, then they just kind of get jostled around. So as you take these little guys out, you can see it's a really nice range and the color of the paper itself, if we're talking about value, would be between the white and the rust color. So you can use the paper as a tone if you're trying to create a drawing using it. So you're actually creating a drawing that has five different colors, not four, because the paper becomes the second lightest. So if you were to photograph this and turn your photo to black and white, this would become that value. Do you guys understand what I mean by that? So play with these guys and see the difference between charcoal and Conte and they really like to layer beautifully. You can use your finger to blend them or you can just layer them by hatching on top and they will naturally blend. So depending on if you want to show the texture or if you want no texture and they will leave a dusty kind of residue. So try I broke to, it. I'm sorry, go ahead, babe. I broke it. You broke it. It's okay. It's going to break. It's all right. So you can see that the Conte will overlap the charcoal, but not necessarily the graphite. It doesn't like my graphite right here because it's a slippery surface, so it won't go over right here, but it will go over here and it will go on top of the charcoal. And again, sometimes that creates more layering and texture. So I'm just building up that surface and trying to create an interesting composition while I'm doing this. I'm not thinking about representational imagery still. Everybody else have filthy hands like me? Good. That's a sign of work. Hard work. It's a good thing this is your last class because you're going to be dirty. Don't touch your Chromebooks after this. So experiment with erasing. Like how much of that Conte can you erase? Can you get that back to the texture of the paper? Do you have to use your white vinyl eraser or do you need to go even further and use your eraser that has sand in it? How far do you have to go? You can always start with the softest eraser if you're worried about the paper falling apart and start with this one and see how much that will erase on its own and then move up if it's not getting enough to the white eraser. and then bring in the big guns with the sand eraser. So that's why you guys have so many erasers. I had help assembling your kits and they were like, seriously, they have three different erasers. I was like, yeah, there's three different reasons. Everybody thinks you guys are spoiled for having these kits. So don't tell anybody. Then you have this baby. So this is my white charcoal stick. So bring him out because he's a little bit harder and he can go through some of that charcoal without turning it gray like the pencil.
so you can make lines and then you can use the side of it to create larger areas and get more bang for your buck. And again, try with your erasers. If you want a soft edge, you can use your eraser so it fades out gradually, or you can go back with your vinyl, clean up some areas. I don't know about you guys, but I've like just made a mess of a lot of my edges because my hands are so dirty. So in my studio, I have a brush that I recommend you guys get. It can be um, a super soft brush. It can even be a painting brush. Obviously, you don't want to use a wet brush. But if you use a brush, you can brush away all of the residue from the erasers. And then you don't smear your drawing because you've got all that fragile vine charcoal in there. I'm gonna go get my brush so you guys can see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Which are you? Let me see yours. Which are the brush? You see this brush? It's ginormous, but it's great because it just gets the shavings away. I'm not pressing very hard without smearing my drawing. I know it sounds stupid to get a brush like this, but it's an awesome investment. It's called a draftsman brush. All right, are we ready to get permanent? Bust open the microns. So in your microns, you've got a one, a three, and a five. And these are all in reference to the size of the point. So when you open it up, the five looks small a lot smaller than like a fine Sharpie. But then you open up the three and you're like, oh my God, that's really small. And then you can't even believe the one. It's the teeniest, tiniest thing. You probably can't even see it on the camera. It's the tiniest point. So these are for like doing super fine hairs like on the tip of someone's nose, like old men, how they have those little fine hairs that grow out of their nose. That's what you would use that for. Or just you could use it for your animals, for your hairy little animals. So play with these different microns, which are also waterproof, which means you can put them down first and then put watercolor over it and they will not bleed. These will also go over your graphite, which is why we're using these at the end. But your graphite will also go over these, but it will not cover completely.
These are great for cross hatching. They're great to develop an area of interest. And you can kind of gradate to see if that's my five and then I move down to my three, how fine can I get it with my three before I move to my one. So I'm now creating some interest in my layering and they're starting to become little areas I'm trying to keep working around the whole paper so I don't get stuck in one area too long Now I'm going to go to my teeny tiny baby. It's so fine you guys probably can't even see that on the camera. So obviously this is for more subtle line work. And you also have a Sharpie pen, which is pretty much the same thing. It's also waterproof, so it is an all black pen. He's a free agent. He is not in captivity with friends like the Microns. He's not as smooth. It's kind of a harder tip, and you'll see that. as you play with him. Do you guys have a fine tip Sharpie in your set? A black and a red one? Or no? I don't think I put one in there. I think that was for my drawing one kids. I have one. You do? Yeah, I got mm -hmm. a black one. Is it just, does it look like this one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because there's another one too, but I think that that went to my drawing kids. And that might be pink. And then we have a white gel pen. Dun -dun. Now this is a really weird gel pen. It's called a glaze. And I don't know like if this is intentional, but when you draw with it, it first just looks like it's slimy. And then when it dries, it dries white. So see what you can go over with this like i was having some weird issues where it doesn't feel like it's as opaque as other gel pens that i've had in the past gel pens should be able to go over everything because it's more like a paint in a pen than it is anything but you'll see it comes out clear and then when it dries, it turns white, which to me is annoying. I'm not I don't into have that. One. I have a yellow one. You don't have a white one? I have a yellow one. You sure you don't have a white one? Do you think it's in another, like maybe it's in your blue palette seal? Maybe you got robbed. And, oh God, I don't know. You must have a white gel pen. It's crucial. Is there anyone else that doesn't have a white gel pen? Never mind, I found it. Okay, good.
Is that annoying to you guys as well, or am I just being a princess about this, like, not showing up immediately? Is that weird? It just doesn't feel like it has the opacity. I kind of like it because you don't know what it's going to look like in the end, so. Carla, that's awesome. As I'm complaining about it, you're finding, like, the joy and the surprise. Jasmine, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> Why do you look sad? Nothing, Mama. I'm coming here bothering me. She's looking at you. Did you tell her you're arting? Get out of here. I'm busy arting, Mom. Quit it. Yeah, I just don't know about this glaze gel pen. But your other little guys, those of you that have other colors, I have a pink in my set. I have a glittery peach color, which is actually kind of a disgusting color, but especially because it has glitter in it. You guys know how I feel about glitter. But this should cover even the graphite again because it's paint so if your white gel pen is making you as frustrated as mine is go ahead and find a gel pen that makes you happy you can use a different color too Oh my god, this really does have glitter in it. That's so gross. Can you guys see the glitter? It's kind of subtle. I'm not sure it's even being picked up by the camera. Ian, how are you doing? Um, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know if this. Let me see your madness. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. We're going to run out of time soon. All right, of all the media that we use today, which one do you guys like the most? Conte. The black velvet, the Conte. I like the Conte. I've always loved it since last year. I love Conte too. I don't know why the seniors last year did not like Conte. They poo-pooed it. Weenies. They told me not to put it in the kit again this year. But I love Conte too. Do you guys love it because of the colors? 
Or do you like how it works? Or both? No. I kind of like how it goes on the paper because you can use your fingers to like make new textures and designs. Yeah, I agree. And plus, like, the colors, they're all neutral, so they go together well. Exactly. Like, I'm putting this blue in here, and I hate it, because I feel like it doesn't play well with everything else. I feel like I want it to be neutral, but that's okay. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to put gesso over it. So... These are all of our dry mediums, except for the sketch and wash, obviously. And then we're going to see how far we can push it by adding some wet media on top of it. But we're not going to do that today because we're running out of time. All right, show me show me all your stuff. Show me your beautiful drawings. <laughs> 